welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be attempting to show you guys how I made my spring GFX with the wind blowing the skirt and the hair. This was super, super highly requested, one of the most highly requested tutorials on my channel recently. Um, I, okay, so I tell you guys in the comments a lot that I kind of had to relearn how to do the wind. This tutorial is not going to be perfect, okay? I'm going to show you guys how I did it. I know I'm probably going to make some mistakes, so I apologize in advance, but if you have any questions, you can just let me know down in the comments below, and I will try my best to answer your guys' questions. So, just a heads up, I really want to do the best tutorial I can for you guys, but of course, it might be a little off because I'm not the best at Blender, okay? Okay, so if you are excited, please be sure to leave a big thumbs up on this video, and we will just get started. So of course, with every tutorial on this channel, we have to start with a folder, so I'm just going to name this Wind GFX. So just do that and open up your Roblox Studio. So we are gonna go in and pick out some hair and pick out a skirt. You can do a skirt, hair, you don't have to do both of them if you don't want to, do whatever you want. So I'm just gonna load in Roblox Studio and load my character. If you have not seen my original GFX tutorial, please be sure to check it out. I have it linked in the info card in the top right corner, so be sure to watch that tutorial first. It'll help you out a lot. So type in your character's name, make sure spawn at origin is clicked, and spawn R6. We can X that tab out. And here's my character, so I'm just going to delete her hair and accessories so we can put a wig on her for example purposes. And we need to get a skirt as well. So I'm just gonna look up wig and pick out one that looks good, really. Um, you wanna pick one that looks like it can kinda blow in the wind. Um, so let's see, I think maybe we'll do this one. I did this one in another G like wind hair GFX, or we could also do this one. This one seems kinda cool. All right, we'll do this one. This one seems like it'll be good. So just get your wig from the toolbox. So pretty much how you do that is the toolbox will be on the left side, or if you don't have it, just like this, you can go up to view at the top, find the toolbox icon and click that. Just look up wig and pick whatever one you think is good and drag it onto the scene. And we are just going to position that on my character's head so it looks good. It takes a little while to line them up, but we'll get it. <laughs> just like this. Okay, cool. So there's my character's wig, and now we are also going to get a skirt. So go to your toolbox and look up skirt and pick one out. Now I'm just gonna let you guys know now that not every skirt works for wind GFX. So these ones with multiple layers, here I'll show you, these ones do not normally work for wind blowing GFX, and I will tell you why. It's because, okay, so when you do wind blowing GFX, what you need to do is you need to have a point where the skirt is not going to blow. So for example, you know when you're like wearing a skirt or pants or whatever, like it's attached at the waistband, you know, so they don't just like fall off. Well, we need to uh, do that in Blender as well. But see, if you have lots of layers like this, you're not gonna be able to select the whole waistband really easily, if that makes sense. So skirts with layers normally don't do too well. I always have luck with this skirt. So if you go on the toolbox, look up skirt, this one has like a shocked cat emoji and it says poofy skirt. And it's the one that kind of has a trail, like train behind it. This one I always have luck with. Usually this one works for wind blowing GFX. So if you want to attempt this one, you can, or you can try a different one if you want to, but as you will see in Roblox Studio and Blender, I guess, more in Blender as you will see, um, it's kind of difficult, so. I advise if this is your first wind blowing GFX to attempt it with this poofy skirt first. And it's a pretty skirt, so you know, we're winning, okay? <laughs> All right, so just pick your skirt from the toolbox and put it on your character. So now I just kind of lined it up. It's not that great, but it's just an example, so we'll go with it. And now we are going to export our character. So we are going to export the texture of our character separately and then the head separately if you're using the woman rig. But like I said, make sure to check out my full GFX tutorial. 
and we are going to load in the skirt and the wig. So let me just export all of those and I will be right back. So if you're doing a GFX with like accessories and stuff, you wanna make sure you export the wig as its own piece. Like you want it to be separate from everything else. So when you load it into Blender as an OBJ, it's going to be separate from everything else, if that makes sense. So we're gonna like right click it, go to export selection and just export it as wig and that's it. You only want it to be the wig. Same thing with the skirt. You don't wanna export it with anything else. So just export it as the skirt only, just like that. And now we are ready to go into Blender. So I'm going to X this out and open up Blender. I'm going to get a rig actually, just so it's a bit easier to load our character. So I'm just gonna put a rig in here. Like I keep saying, be sure to watch my full GFX tutorial if you haven't seen it yet, because it'll explain how to use a rig and all of those things. So I'm just going to set up my woman rig really quick and I will be right back. Alright, so now we are here in Blender. We have my character right here. So now we are going to import the skirt and the wig. So go up to File, Import, Wavefront.obj, of course, as usual, and import the wig. Or you could do the skirt first, but I usually do the wig first. Alright, and we are going to rotate this because obviously it's backwards. What you can do on the right side if you go to Item, Open Up, Transform, there's a little rotation, so if you click your wig and go to Z, you can type in 180 and it'll turn it around for you automatically so you don't have to like mess with the rotation tool. Just a quick tip. And we are also going to import our skirt, just like this, and rotate it the same way by typing in 180 on the Z rotation, just like that. And now we are all ready to go. So as you can see, the wig is gray and it has some black lines through it, but I have a complete tutorial on how to fix that problem and how to color your wig. So if you want to see that tutorial, please be sure to check it out. I'll link it in the info card. It's a super quick tutorial. It'll show you how to pick the color of your wig and get rid of the black lines. So please be sure to check that out, but I am just going to do that really quick and speed it up. So I will be right back. I'm just gonna leave the color gray and I'm going to remove the black lines really quick because they're kind of irritating. Okay, be right back. All right, so now that we got rid of the black lines on our wig, um, we are pretty much ready to start. I will show you guys how to color your skirt really quick if you would like to color it. So what you need to do is you need to click your skirt, just make sure it's outlined and selected. On the right side over here, you want to go to the little tab. Well, let me get to it. Okay. Okay, select your skirt. Um, you want to go to this little circle icon. This is the material properties tab. What you can do is you can come in here and we are going to go up here where this little bar is saying the name of our texture. You're going to hit the little X next to that and then click new. So it made a brand new skirt texture. And under base color, you can select that and change it to any color that you want on the color wheel. Now, just letting you know, your color will not show up if you are in solid view mode. What you need to do is hit Z on your keyboard and make sure you're in material preview mode and it'll show you the color of your skirt. That's just a little tip, just letting you know. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna make the skirt match the shirt of my character and we are pretty much ready to go. Also, if you want your skirt to be a little bit transparent, because sometimes that's kind of fun for the design, you can scroll down and go to alpha. It's where we change the color. You're just gonna scroll down a little bit and you can turn down the alpha a little bit. Maybe I'll do like 0.6 and I will show you guys really quick. As you can see when it'll render, it'll be kind of see-through. So pretty cool. If you wanna see how yours looks, you can just hit Z on your keyboard and hit rendered but this might lag a little bit. So when you're done, be sure to hit Z and go back to material preview just so you don't lag out. All right, so now we are ready to start setting up the wind. And so I'm gonna try and explain this the best I can. So we are going to start with the skirt. And what you need to do is pretty much we are going to add a blender cloth modifier to it. So I will show you guys how this works really quick. So click your skirt. Go over to the right side and go to this tab with a little circle and another circle around it, just like this. It is called the Physics Properties tab. 
you are going to go here and make sure you have your skirt selected and select cloth. Do that and pretty much it'll make it cloth. So on the bottom, you should have a little timeline, like an animation timeline. This isn't going to be an animation, but we kind of use animation a little bit to make it look like it's blowing. So on the bottom, you should have a little timeline with a clock, or if you do not have it, what you need to do is go over on the left side and click this little icon over here. So you're just going to click that, open it up, and select timeline, just like this, and it'll open up a timeline on the bottom. So if you hit the play button, as you can see, the skirt is just going to fall because we set it up so it's a cloth modifier, but what we need to do is we need to attach it to the body. So I will show you guys how to do that right now. So how you do that is we are going to make a pin group at the top. So just kind of like I said before, the elastic that holds like skirts and pants and shorts and all those things on you, we are pretty much just going to mimic that in Blender. So you're going to go into edit mode while you have the skirt selected. The way you can do that is go down here on the bottom where it says object mode, or it might be at the top, and then go to edit mode. And we are in edit mode right now. Using your little axis at the top, select one of the red or green icons. So we're looking at it from the side, just like this. Just make sure you are pretty much straight and lined up. And now what we are going to do is on the bottom or top, it depends on if you're using a rig or not, there's this little icon with two boxes. You want to click this and it turns on x-ray. And what this does pretty much is that when you select it, just like this, it's going to select all the way through the object. If we didn't have that on, what it does, as you can see, is it only selects the part of the object you can see, if that makes sense. So make sure you have your little x-ray turned on. So we are going to click somewhere off of the skirt to make it all like little black dots and make sure that none of it's selected. You are going to hit B on your keyboard and it'll give you this little draggy tool. You are going to drag and select the top of your skirt where the waistband is, just like this. And after you do that, what you need to do is come over on the right side, make sure that it's still yellow and selected. You are going to go to this icon that looks like a little triangle and it's object data properties. You are going to open this up and then in here, what you need to do is you need to go down to vertex groups. On the side of vertex groups, there should be a little plus. You are going to click that and you can rename it if you want to, to help because sometimes it's better to name stuff so you know what it is. So I'm going to name it skirt waistband, or you can name it whatever you want to, to remember. You can even leave it named group if you want to. I just sometimes like to name stuff to help remember. Okay. So make sure you are in edit mode and still have the waistband selected like this, where only the waistband is gold. Select your vertex group you just made on the right side and click assign at the bottom. So I'm just going to click that. And now what we need to do is we need to go over again to the two circles icon over here. It is the physics properties tab and we are going to scroll down, go to shape and open that up. And then you are going to see a little thing called pin group. You are going to click pin group, the little box right here. It's just like a bunch of boxes. You can click that and select skirt waistband. And now the skirt should be attached. So what we are going to do is going to test it out. You can go back into object mode and I'm just going to move the camera a little bit so we can see it. So how you test it again is you're going to hit play on your timeline at the bottom. Again, you just go to the little clock icon timeline and just click play. And as you can see, now the skirt is attached. So it falls down but it's attached at her waist, so it's not just falling away anymore, which is great. And now, as you can see, the skirt is kind of going through her legs. Like, it doesn't really care that the legs are there, it just goes right through. So I will show you guys how to fix that right now. What you need to do for every object that the skirt is going to come in contact with, you need to click that. So we are going to click the limb of our character. Go over to the right side and make sure you are in the physics properties tab with the two little circles and you are going to click collision and that is it. And now when the skirt hits that leg, it is not going to collide with it anymore as you can see. So now it's going to stay away from that leg because it knows that it'll collide with it. 
So pretty much it makes it something that it's going to collide with. All right, so we're gonna do that for everything it'll come in contact with. So I'm gonna do the other leg and turn on collision. And I'm going to turn it on the arms and the hands as well. So just select each body part. And just a quick tip, if you are using the blocky rig, you may know you aren't able to click the body part. So what you need to do is you need to come over on the right side to this explorer over here and you need to find the body parts and click them and that'll select them for you and then you need to click collision. So there will be stuff over here if you're using the blocky rig that says like torso and you need to click that and then click collision to make it a collision and then it'll say like different things you just need to make sure to click each of the body parts and click collision and that's how you select them because if you use the blocky rig you can't just click them in the viewport you have to go over on the right side and click them so just letting you guys know if you're using the blocky rig all right so we are also going to click the skirt again and scroll down on our physics properties tab and we are going to go down to collisions and open that up and what you want to do is turn on the box that says self collisions and pretty much that means that the skirt can't like turn inside out and turn on itself like the skirt can't collide with the skirt if you know what I mean like now it's like a solid object and the skirt just can't fly through the skirt because before it could just go all over the place so just make sure you turn that on turn on self collisions that means it will collide with itself and now I want to show you an example with the wind so how we add the wind is you're going to hit shift A on your keyboard, make sure you are in object mode, and go down to force field. Under force field, you are going to select wind and it'll add in some wind. I'm gonna get the move tool and move it around. So right now the wind is pointing upward. So what we need to do is use the rotate tool on our left side and just rotate it for whatever way you want the wind to be blowing. So for this example, we're just gonna make the wind blowing straight just like this. But you can put it at an angle if you want to. You can pretty much do whatever angle you want. So let's give this a test. All right, so we have the wind set up and I am also going to go on the right side over here and make sure you have the wind selected just like this so it is nice and golden. And on the right side, again, under physics properties, there's gonna be some like settings for the wind. I'm gonna set the strength of the wind to maybe 200 just for this example so we can see the skirt blow. And all you need to do to test it is go down to your timeline at the bottom again and hit play. All right, so when you like how the skirt looks, you can just hit the pause button on your timeline. And as you can see, it'll be paused and as you can see, the skirt is blowing in the wind. So if you don't like how it looks, all you need to do is go down on your timeline, just right here, if I can open it, there we go. And you need to drag this blue little cursor back to zero. And if you drag it back to zero, then we will be back at the beginning of the animation. So pretty much this is an animation, but we are just going to be rendering one frame of the animation, so it is an image. So, okay, let's see. So I'm gonna put the wind at an angle a little bit. I'm just gonna rotate it. And I'm also gonna turn down the strength a little bit, maybe to 140, just like this. And let's test it out again. So I'm just gonna hit play on my timeline and not talk for just a second because I don't want my voice to lag. So I'm just gonna hit play on the timeline. Pause it when you think it looks good. And here is the skirt blowing in the wind. So that is pretty much it for the skirt. We are going to do the exact same thing for the hair. And sometimes the hair can be a little bit crazy. It doesn't work all the time. So I'm gonna try my best to show you guys. But anyways, we are on to the hair. And also really quick tip, you wanna hit Control S on your keyboard to save, or you can go up to file and click save there as well. Just make sure you are saving because if you lag out, and blender closes and you lose all your progress that will not be good so please be sure to save and also if you're lagging a little bit you can go into solid view mode down at the bottom or hit z on your keyboard and go to solid that might help a little bit with the lag as well so just keep that in mind the hair is pretty much the exact same thing as the skirt so we are going to do it the exact same way first we are going to select the hair 
And what you want to do is use your axis at the top to go to the side or the front or whichever side you want. And we are going to go into edit mode. So go to where it says object mode and go into edit mode. Turn on your x-ray mode at the top or bottom of the screen using these two boxes right here. And we are going to use B on our keyboard to drag and select the top of the head. So pretty much we are going to select all the hair that is around the head. So, you know, like of course on the back of your head and stuff, the hair is attached so it doesn't just fly off your head. So we are going to select all that hair. So I'm just gonna drag and select about right around where my character's chin is, just like that. It's going to select all the top of the hair. And what you wanna do is go on the right side and go down to the triangle with the little three dots. Go to vertex groups and you are going to click a plus right here. I'm going to double click it and rename it wig, maybe wig pin group, just something that you will remember. So make sure to do that just like this. And then make sure it's still selected and golden and you are going to click assign just like that. Now what you need to do is on the right side, you're going to go to the two circles right here where of course it is physics properties that we have used a couple times today. And you are going to make sure you have the hair selected and go to cloth. Click that and we are going to do the exact same thing. So we are going to scroll down and under pin group, we are going to select wig pin group or the one you just made, whatever you named it, and go down to collisions and check self collisions. And also I didn't say, but the pin group is under shape. So if you don't see it, just open up the shape tab right there and it'll be there. All right, so now we are going to test that as well. You can come out of edit mode and go back into object mode. And of course I'm going to turn off my x-ray as well because everything is see-through. So let me just turn that off. And let's watch and see the wind blow both the skirt and the hair. So go down and hit the play button on your timeline and watch it blow. All right, so I'm going to pause it right there. As you can see, the skirt and the hair are both blowing. So if you made a GFX from right here, like if you set up your camera here and rendered it, it would look amazing. So after you set up your wind, set up your skirt and your hair, whatever you want to blow in the wind, you could even do capes this way if you wanted to, honestly, just do it the exact same way where you set up the pin group, set up the collisions and all those things, and then you are ready to go. But I will show you guys how to render this really quick. Because you might be asking and saying, well, the problem is that I'm hitting the play button on my timeline. This is an animation, so how is this gonna work? I will show you guys really quick. So make sure you are in object mode and just add a camera in really quick. You are going to hit zero on your keyboard or go to view cameras, active camera. As you can see, it's the same thing as hitting your number pad zero. Just do that and use the same keys to move around. So I'm just going to move the camera right here maybe just for an example purpose. And what you are going to do is come out of your camera, or you don't have to if you don't want to, of course, and play the animation. Just hit the little play button on your timeline until you think that it looks good. So just play it until you think that you like how the skirt looks and like how the hair look. And if you don't like it, all you need to do is just go back to zero on your timeline and start over and just play it until you think it looks good and then pause it and I will be right back. All right, so now that we have it looking pretty good, you can also pose your character and add in some props and all those things. But since this is just an example, um, I'm not going to be doing that today. I am at about frame 30 on the bottom. And now I am going to show you guys how you can get this to an image. So once you are happy with it and think it looks amazing, the wind is blowing, it looks beautiful. All you need to do is you need to go up to the top and select render image and that is pretty much it so instead of rendering an animation we are going to be rendering this image and of course you want to make sure to go on the right side and select all the render settings that you want so i changed my samples just to 60 i'll turn it down to 30 maybe so it'll go a little bit faster and just make sure all your render settings are correct and i'm going to render it really quick and i will show you guys as you will be able to see the wind and the skirt 
and everything while the wind will be blowing, the skirt will be blowing, the hair will be blowing. As you can see, it already looks super beautiful. So as you can see, it is super beautiful. The skirt is blowing, the hair is blowing. Everything looks super beautiful. So that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Now I wanted to tell you guys something really quick. So as you can see, sorry, it's kind of noisy. Um, I used a really low sample quality, so it looks kind of pixelated, but the hair is kind of going through the skirt. Now I have a way to fix this, but I tested it out and it doesn't always work. So I kind of like the look of this better than the fix I have, just letting you guys know. But if you come into Blender, you can select the skirt and go over to the physics properties tab with the little two circles and you can select collision for the skirt and collision for the hair. Now what that'll do is make it so the hair and the skirt cannot collide with each other. So they cannot touch and you know, clip like that where the skirt and the hair are kind of going through each other. The only problem is, is that when I tested this, it kind of made the hair go crazy and the skirt go crazy. And I've had this happen before, so it's kind of trial and error if it's going to work or not. So honestly, I prefer having it look like this with a little bit of clipping and you can kind of edit it in your editing program to make it look not so clipped together like that. But just wanted to let you guys know that that is an option. But anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for this tutorial. If you have not seen it yet, I'm going to show you the GFX really quick that I did with this tutorial. So this is the GFX I made using the wind. As you can see, the skirt is blowing and the hair is blowing. So you guys really wanted to see this tutorial. So that is pretty much how I made it. I hope this tutorial was helpful. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. I apologize. I know this isn't like a perfect tutorial. It's not an amazing blender tutorial, but I really hope it helps you guys out a little bit with your GFX. If it helped you, please be sure to leave a big thumbs up and also send it to your other GFX and making friends if you think they will find it helpful as well. And if you have not yet, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you do not miss any future notifications from my channel. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Again, of course, if you have any questions or need anything at all, leave a comment down below or message me on my Discord server, which is linked down in the description below. But anyways, guys, I guess that's all I have for you today and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.